channel. My name is uh, Siddharaj Bhatta and my email is siddhabhatta at the red gmail dot com. In this video, uh, I'm going to overview some of the widely discussed uh, growth models in the economic growth literature. First of all, uh, economic growth uh, is uh, uh, defined as simply the increase in capacity to produce goods and services over time. It is generally measured by the rate of increase in gross domestic product, which is the uh, sum total of the production of goods and services within an economy or in a period of time. So the economic growth is important for an economy because it increases the employment opportunities. Uh, it helps raise the consumption of goods and services by the individual and uh, it uh, may contribute to sustainable poverty reduction. And finally, if economic growth is properly managed and its benefits are properly distributed in a society, it may contribute toward an increase in welfare. So, uh, one of the first widely discussed in widely discussed economic growth model in the literature of economic growth is Harrod growth model uh, it is a growth model built in Keynesian type of framework where the savings functions and interact investment function interact with each other to determine the level of output in the economy so the main the main argument of this model is that the rate of savings is the single most important determinant of growth. So given the technology, given the production technology techniques of production, it is the rate of saving that determines the growth rate. So we can discuss the model framework under the three headings. The first one is about the saving rate. The total savings in an economy is a constant fraction of total output, that is, uh, capital S is equal to saving rate times output, whereas the saving rate we call it propensity to save. Investment, on the other hand, depends on the change in output. This is called accelerator theory. So I equals to V times change in Y, where V is accelerator, its the value is always positive. So this this equation tells us that when change in y is zero, there is no investment. When change in y is positive, the investment is positive, and when change in y is negative, uh, there is a recession. There is disinvestment in the economy. The third one is about labor force. Labor force is assumed to grow at a constant rate of one percent. So the macroeconomic equilibrium requires uh, savings to be equal to investment, which which gives us uh, this equation. So by substituting uh, yes times y for s and uh, v times change in y for i, and uh, solving them uh, gives this equation. So this equation is the uh, growth rate equation, which tells us that growth rate of output is given by yes times v. So, uh, under the given technology, uh, V remains constant, and this equation tells that yes is the determinant of output growth. Higher the saving rate, higher will be the growth rate of the economy. So, <coughs> given the low growth rate of Naples economy, this uh, this equation may have important implication to boost the growth rate by increasing the rate of saving. So there are a few limitations with this model. The first one is that it completely rejects the rule of technological progress in economic growth trajectory. Evidences around the world have shown that increase in factor productivity has driven the growth of output over the time in many emerging and advanced countries. The second one is about the assumption of production function. In in 
In Harrod model, the production function is assumed to be Leontief type, that is, fixed coefficient type. This implies that the factors of production are used in a fixed ratio. To increase production, all of them have to be increased by same percentage. So this, this assumption is rather unrealistic in most cases. Especially Robert M. Solo, a Nobel Prize winner in economics for the contribution of growth, criticizes this assumption as the main cause of instability in the model. So this, uh, the second the celebrated model in growth literature is Domer model. Domer model also stresses the role of savings in the economy as the main determinant of growth, but he, he slightly reaches this conclusion with a uh, he reaches this conclusion with a different line of reasoning. He emphasizes the dual role played by investment in the economy. Means investment has uh, effects on two broad sides of the economy, the demand side and the supply side. On the demand side, investment increases income through a Keynesian multiplier principle. That is, when investment is done in the economy, it raises aggregate demand and raises output. This is called Keynesian multiplier principle. And in, the, in, 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 in this way, uh, investment raises aggregate demand, raises income, which in turn again raises aggregate demand in the economy. On the other hand, on the supply side, investment raises the productive capacity. So the demand side effect can be summarized by this equation. This is the famous Keynesian multiplier, uh, which says that if investment is increased by change in I, output will increase by 1 by S times change in I. So its value, the value of 1 by S is greater than 1 because S is saving ratio which lies between 0 and 1. So, so this equation ultimately says that when there is investment done, output or income increases by more than the amount of investment. The supply side mm, of investment can be summarized by this equation. This is the production function. The production function says that the potential output of the economy, uh, sorry, this this should be capital stocks. This is typing mistake. This should be capital stock. <coughs> the potential output is uh, proportional to capital stock. So this sigma is the productivity of capital. Uh, means uh, this is the uh, productivity of uh, one unit of capital. So by taking changes, uh, we uh, we uh, derive this change in potential output equals to sigma times change in capital equals to change in capital equals to I. Sorry, this should be change in K. This should be change in K. So equilibrium uh, requires change in aggregate demand, change in Y equals to change in productive capacity, change in YP, which gives us the required growth of investment as change in I upon I equals to S times sigma. So again, uh, given the technology, the productivity of capital remains constant and the saving ratio again appears to be the most important determinant of investment rate and the growth rate of output. So Domer model has some also have some limitations and some policy implications. <coughs> the first important policy implication is that it emphasizes the role of investment as major driver of the growth of output. So if the productivity of capital remains constant, higher growth uh, can be achieved only through higher investment financed through higher savings. However, this model also overlooks the role of technological progress as a potential source of growth. And also, <coughs> because of the fixed coefficient type of technology assumed in this model, uh, this problem of instability means uh, once the economy deviates from equilibrium, uh, it, it uh, automatically never comes back to equilibrium. 
so the third most discussed growth model is the exogenous growth model uh, put forward by Robert M. Solo. So it is the most celebrated argument in the fields of economic growth for which uh, Robert M. Solo won the Nobel Prize in Economics. So the major argument of this model is that economic growth in the long run is not it doesn't depend on the rate of savings and uh, the rate of increase in labor force but it is it is determined by the technological progress T technological progress is the only factor that can bring a persistent increase in per capita output in the long run so we can discuss the model under uh, this this three um, assumptions the first one is the production technology with consumer returns to scale uh, the second one is the savings uh, as a constant fraction of output this assumption is uh, similar to Harrod model and the third one is the substitutability between labor and capital this means the fixed coefficient type of production function has been dropped here the production function in the production function labor and capital can be substituted continuously with each other with this assumption he uh, concludes that there will be no growth in output in the long run per capita output in the long run until technological progress enters the scenario with the labor augmenting technological progress productivity of labor rises which shifts the production function upwards and results in an increase in per capita output so there are two important policy implications there are important policy implications of solo's model the first one is about the role of savings increasing rate of saving uh, does not doesn't leave any lasting effect on growth rate with the increase in saving the economy moves to a new steady state equilibrium with higher per capita income and higher per capita capital and then per capita growth would be zero again the second one is that the per the per capita growth in in income can only come through technological progress that exogenous and unexplainable by the model third implication is that the level of per capita income depends on per capita capital and the growth of per capita income depends on marginal productivity of capital this means that countries with relatively low per capita capital relative to labor just like the LDCs experience lower per capita income but faster per capita income growth because lower value of K means higher capital productivity than countries with high per capita capital. So one one weakness of solar model is that the technological progress has been assumed to be exogenous. It implies that technological progress cannot be brought in the economy through investments in research and development and education so this assumption is uh, rather unrealistic because a technological progress is possible through investment in human capital it's like investment in education investment in research and development and investment in the creation of new ideas so the the recently developed indigenous growth theory which is also called a new growth theory uh, this improves the solo's argument and solo's growth argument uh, by just incorporating technological progress as endogenous in the model so th these models are the recent developments in growth theory that emphasize on the investment in human capital as the only source of long run growth. Technological progress is assumed to be endogenous. This implies that technology improves through learning by doing, 
through investment in education, investment in research and development, and investment in other forms of human capital. So, such investment in human capital is an addition to the public stock of knowledge that has large positive externalities and spillover effects. Public stock of knowledge is like public good that benefits all producers. So this implies that when investment is in, in done in research and development, not only the investor is benefited, but also the whole society is benefited from that knowledge. So, so creation of new ideas has a spillover effects across the industry that leads to increasing returns to scale as a whole. It helps to bring growth and per capita output in the long run. So there are most important implication of this new growth argument. The first one is countries having a greater stock of human capital and investing more on research and development will enjoy a faster growth in output. The second implication is that government should invest in education and give subsidy as it has a spillover effect on the productivity of other people. The third one is the rate of return on capital is likely to be higher in developed countries as such well the growth of per capita will be higher. Thus, the growth convergence hypothesis of Sholo may not be true. Thank you for your patience to watch this video. Please visit my YouTube channel for more videos and don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel. Thank you.